Although Sweden maintained a stance of neutrality during the height of the Cold War, its pilots were prepared to sacrifice their lives for the greater good in the event of a nuclear conflict with Russia, with their Vigans fully equipped for battle. The Saab Aerospace Company created the aerodynamically advanced Draken fighter in the early 1950s, making its first flight in 1955. Following this success, the Swedish Air Force promptly established the criteria for its next-gen combat aircraft. The planned mid-1960s aircraft was intended to be versatile for all tactical missions, equipped with an integrated weapon system that would work in conjunction with Sweden's National Electronic Air Defense System SDRIL-60. A radical requirement for the proposed aircraft was its capability to operate from short runways of only 1,640 feet as part of the BAS-60 air base system. Developed by the Swedish Air Force during the Cold War, the 60 was introduced in the late 1950s with the concept of dispersing numerous aircraft across several World War II air bases, including road runways as backup. The aircraft also had to possess high maneuverability and low turbulence sensitivity during subsonic low-level flight, perform at Mark II at high altitudes, and be easy to repair and service, even for those with limited training. The design had to meet numerous critical requirements due to the wide range of operations it would perform. Over 100 concepts were evaluated in previous studies to create the optimal aircraft, including single and twin engine configurations, traditional and double delta wings, and the inclusion of a canard. In 1960, President White led the United States National Security Council. President Eisenhower presented Sweden with a tempting offer through the 37 Annex Military Technology Agreement, which guaranteed military assistance in case of a Soviet attack. As part of the deal, Swedish engineers were granted access to America's state-of-the-art aeronautical technology, leading to a more cost-effective and efficient aircraft design by Saab. In December 1961, the approval for the development of Aircraft System 37 was granted by the Swedish government. During the Cold War, the construction of the largest industrial development task in Sweden, in response to a potential Russian attack, began. By 1962, the major components of the project were either complete or nearing completion, including the power plant, ejector seat, weapons, reconnaissance systems, training gear, and the fighter aircraft, and a contract for development was signed later in the fall. This challenging project consumed 10% of Sweden's research and development funding for the entire decade. The Saab 37 Vigan was a single-engine, short-to-medium-range combat aircraft with a highly advanced aerodynamic design for its time, including a unique double delta wing mounted at the rear. Furthermore, the aircraft was equipped with small delta-shaped canard for planes mounted high on the fuselage, making the Saab model the first aircraft to mass-produce this feature. The term Vigan had two separate interpretations. The first meaning of Vigan was in reference to a skvig, which was translated as thunderstones in history. In Norse mythology, the term was used by the Viking Age people of Scandinavia to describe prehistoric stone axes. According to belief, these axes were sent by the god Thor through lightning strikes and were thought to possess magical qualities, such as providing protection against lightning. The second meaning of Vigan came from Vig, the Swedish word for tufted duck, referencing its canard configuration which is the French word for duck. Initially, Saab intended to equip the Vigan with a single Rolls-Royce Medway engine. However, after the cancellation of its development, the aerospace company decided to license the Pratt & Whitney JD-8D engine and developed a modified version of it, called the Volvo Aramate. The Saab 37 was designed with a thrust reverse on its airframe to shorten the landing distance and assist in slowing the aircraft down. The thrust reverser on the Saab 37, a unique feature in single-engined aircrafts, allowed it to taxi backward, similar to that of a car. However, when backing up, the pilot had to exercise caution and avoid using the wheel brake pedals as the aircraft was prone to tipping over. From the early design phase, Saab engineers determined that the Vigant should integrate a digital central computer and a head-up display to take over the responsibilities and performance of a second crew member. The central computer, named Central Calculator 37, was the world's first airborne machine to utilize integrated circuits. 
it assisted the pilot by executing tasks such as navigation, flight control, and weapon aiming calculations. As originally intended, the first flight of the Saab 37 took place in 1967 with Eric Dahlstrom at the controls, the company's chief test pilot. Dahlstrom stated that the new jet was easy to control. The original plan of the Swedish government was to replace all their current combat aircrafts with 800 Vigans. However, due to inflation and other unforeseen events, the final number of Vigans was reduced to 329. The Swedish Air Force received the first delivery of a Saab 37 Vigan in July 1971. Upon its introduction, the Vigan was the most technologically advanced fighter jet in Europe. By 1974, the safety and reliability of Sweden's newest fighter had surpassed expectations. Although the Saab 37 never saw combat use, it established itself as a secure, dependable, and easy-to-maintain aircraft. The final product was an exceptional aircraft, capable of reaching speeds of 1,386 miles per hour, climbing at a rate of 40,000 feet per minute, and reaching a maximum operational altitude of 15,000 feet. In terms of armament, the Vigan was equipped with a single 30mm Orlikon KCI cannon with 125 rounds and 6 hard points, 3 under each wing and 3 under the fuselage. A notable concern during low-level flight was the frequent risk posed to the aircraft by birds. To address this issue, the Swedish Air Force closely monitored bird migratory patterns. By that time, the Swedish Air Force had two operational squadrons using the Vigan with another one prepared for training. There were various variations of the aircraft including the AJ-37 ground attack version capable of carrying a weapons load of up to 15,500 pounds on nine attachment points and the later J-37 all-weather interceptor. Other versions served as strike fighters, aerial reconnaissance planes, maritime patrol aircraft, and a two-person trainer. During the peak of the Cold War when East-West tensions were at their highest, Vigan pilots conducted approximately 500 live quick reaction alert missions annually to intercept any aircraft entering Swedish airspace. These targets originated from both the Warsaw Pact and NATO countries flying near Swedish airspace over the Baltic Sea and the Gulf of Bothnia. Nevertheless, the most difficult quick reaction alert targets were the uncatchable SR-71 Blackbirds of the United States Air Force, which had a reputation for being able to outrun missiles. The SR-71 exceptional capabilities offered a rare chance for Vigan pilots to assess and test various intercept methods against high-speed and high-altitude threats. By the mid-1980s, Swedish pilots were able to achieve radar lock-on with the SR-71 on several occasions by exploiting the predictable flight patterns of the Blackbirds over the Baltic Sea. In June of 1987, a Blackbird piloted by Lieutenant Colonels Dwayne Nall and Tom Veltri suffered an unexpected engine failure during one of these missions. As the Blackbird was flying over the neutral waters of the Baltic Sea close to Soviet territory, one of its powerful Pratt and Whitney J581 after burning engines lost power. The crew was forced to descend to 25,000 feet within Swedish airspace, leaving them in a vulnerable situation. Immediately, the Blackbird was intercepted by two pairs of Swedish Saab 37 Vigan fighter jets, which safeguarded the spy plane and prevented any hostile fighter from interfering with it. The four Swedish pilots acted as guardian angels for the SR-71 crew. During that time, the Soviet Air Force had a squadron of MiG-25 PD Fox Bat high-speed interceptors stationed in East Germany that frequently attempted to intercept the Baltic Express without success. However, information about the 1987 encounter between the SR-71 and the Saab 37 Vigans was not made public until 30 years later. During the 1990s, the aircraft, now designated as the JF-3070 variant, underwent several significant avionics upgrades, including a more advanced computer. However, by that time, it was being gradually replaced by the newer Saab JAS-39 Gripen with the last active model of the Saab 37 Vigan being retired in November 2005. Despite this, a few models were still utilized for electronic warfare training against the Gripen, and their final official flights took place in 2007. Ten years later, on November 28, 2017, in Stockholm, 
United States Air Force officials honored all Swedish pilots with their medals for their courageous actions during the Cold War. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and for more content like this subscribe to the channel to get notified when we make a new upload.